Hello scientific genius people. So we are continuing our discussion on interference lecture series and this is a continuation of maximum and minimum path difference in Young's double slit experiment. So here we are given S1 and S2 two slits and this is point P, the center of the, the screen and the distance between S and S1 and S2 is small d. Now this small d is in millimeters and this distance between the slits and the screen is capital D which I am not mentioning over here which is in meters. So now let us find out what is the minimum and maximum path difference over here. So what is going to happen suppose if the waves light waves from S1 meet at point P with the waves coming from S2. So the waves would be traveling like this and finally they would meet at point B by traveling distance R1 and R2. So we know that these two distances traveled by the waves coming out from S1 and S2 are same. So since R1 and R2 are same, so path difference is R2 minus R1 which is 0 which is the minimum path difference available for the waves. So at this point since the path difference is 0, it is a bright fringe and this is called central bright fringe. Now imagine a situation where this P point is shifted somewhere over here. So waves from S1 and S2 will travel distance R1 and R2 wherein these two R1 and R2 distances are not same. So now the R2 is larger than R1. So what I need to do is I need to make a perpendicular line from here and then this would be the path difference at point P if I shift point P over here. So if I take this point P further you would see that these two waves which are meeting at point P on the screen say this is point P or this on the screen as we shift the point higher and higher on the screen you will see that the path difference this is R1 this is R2 so this is one point this is another point like this you can see that this path difference has increased earlier this was the path difference now this is the path difference so the path difference keeps on increasing as the point P is shifted uh, higher and higher on the screen now in this way if you keep on going till infinity so infinity is a point on the screen and we cannot reach infinity but I can make you generalize like this that suppose the waves from S1 move like this in this way and from S2 also the waves they move like this and they again go in the same direction and suppose P is the point at a very far away from here on the same line where they are meeting. So from S1 to P and from S2 to P we can clearly see that this D is the path difference. Right? So let me make it clear over here. This is this is the situation. This is S1. This is S2. So the waves coming from S1 they travel like this going straight and to point P which is at infinity. So that distance would be from S1 to P would be a very large distance that would be R1 and again from S2 like this to point P that would be again a long distance that is R2. So we can clearly see that S2 P minus S1 P is this distance which is the maximum path difference. So guys the maximum path difference available in YDSA setup is actually the distance between S1 and S2. So I am going to write down small d over here. S1, S2 distance. And of course uh, it carries a very deep meaning because if I take this d as say 3 lambda. So that means the rays are going to meet at infinity with the screen because parallel rays and the screen are meeting at infinity. So what is going to happen? We have at infinity third bright fringe. So third bright fringe at the top 
and in the same way from S2 down and from S1 again down both rays would be meeting at this screen at infinity so again the path difference is D so when these two rays going up and when these two rays going down the path difference is D so you will get same order of the fringe at plus infinity and at minus infinity so if I say that this D is 3 lambda then the third bright fringe would be at infinity up and infinity down so n is equal to 0 is present over here n is equal to 1 would be present over here n is equal to 2 would be present over here in the same way n is equal to 1 bright fringe down n is equal to 2 bright fringe up also so 1 2 3 4 5 fringes will be visible to you but the third bright fringe is at infinity on the screen top and bottom so there are seven fringes that are formed but we can only see five fringes due to the matter of the fact that the third bright fringe whose path difference is 3 lambda is formed at infinity up and infinity down. So let's try to uh, solve a problem on the basis of this one. So here you are given a circle and this, this circle itself is actually a screen S1, S2, R2 current sources and suppose D is given as 3 lambda. So this distance between S1 and S2 is how much? 3 lambda. Now I would like to tell you these two points would be the points on the screen where the path difference would be 0. So over here n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 0 fringes. Central bright fringes will be formed. And why is that? Because you can see by yourself that if I join S1 and S2 over here or over here, the path differences are same. Sorry, the paths are same. So the path difference would be 0. Correct. Now let us take this point. So waves from S1 would travel and meet with the waves traveling from S1. So waves from S2 when they reach over here and when the waves from S1 they reach over here, the path difference is clearly seen it is D which is 3 lambda. So at this point the path difference would be 3 lambda. So here the third bright fringe would be formed in the same way S1 to this point and S2 to this point this is the path difference. So again n is equal to third order fringe will be formed. So it is very true that n is equal to 1 would be formed over here, n is equal to 2 would be formed over here, again n is equal to 1 would be formed over here, n is equal to 2 would be formed over here, again n1 and n is equal to 2 because intermediate between n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 3 there would be other two fringes, bright fringes as well. In the same way, n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2. So if you look carefully guys, how many um, total fringes are formed? Starting from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So total number of fringes formed Now some of us may make this mistake by saying that okay in one fourth circle if there are four fringes then in the complete circle there would be 16 fringes but we fail to understand one thing that from this part n is equal to 0 and from this part n is equal to 0 are coinciding. So it has to be counted as one fringe only. In the same way third fringe of this part and the third fringe of this part are again coinciding. So we would be taking this as a single fringe. So in that way four fringes which are common would be eradicated. So hopefully guys you have understood my uh, lecture on uh, maximum and minimum path difference. So if you have enjoyed the explanation please do subscribe to my channel and if you have any doubts please do comments uh, please do comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching the video.